Okay, welcome back to the... Uh, I'll give you another look at that Dyson Sphere. Well, welcome back to the guides for Dyson for the Dyson Sphere program. Um, today what I'll discuss with you is um, like all the different options for generating energy and uh, or, or power that I found um, that might be helpful to you. So I think the one that you start with is the uh, the wind turbine which is okay um, you're just sort of forced to use it and uh, there's not much I guess not much option that you have it doesn't generate a huge amount of um, power I'm just trying to see if I can find any I might have yeah I might have ripped them up but um, they are useful in that they have they just always produce power uh, so doesn't matter if the sun's up or not um, or anything like that they always just produce power which is, is quite handy and I'm still relying on them f on some of the other planets that uh, don't have any kind of advanced power infrastructure set up for um, uh, for their particular case so they're very useful early on and they're also useful for when you just arrive on a new planet um, to kind of get started kick things off um, there are other solutions as well that work pretty well that I'll talk about in a minute but um, they're not a bad not a bad start very easy to make very cheap to make okay the next energy source that you unlock I believe is this um, thermal power station which is fairly useful it produces uh, maybe what about twi 10 times the power output but the problem with it is that you have to uh, keep it fed with something and uh, any resources at some point going to run out so for example you could feed coal into it but you're gonna run out of coal at some point right over the course of the game so there's not much you can do um, about that so re relying on these thermal power stations is not great um, but at the same time they also produce quite quite a lot of power which means that it's a lot easier to uh, or let, it consumes a lot less area and it takes a lot fewer clicks to actually make a power solution work with this uh, kind of setup but the other problem that I found is that it's really hard to judge how to actually set up uh, you know a scalable version of it because the consumption of the input is kind of variable uh, over time depending on uh, the load so if there's a huge load on these then they actually consume fuel very quickly um, but you can see like right now there's no load on it so it actually doesn't consume the fuel at all um, so judging kind of without doing the number crunching which I don't know is maybe not that fun but um, without that you're going to struggle to actually put together a proper system that uh, will just continue to chain along things now the other useful thing for these is actually a dumping ground for materials that that you don't really want but it's also not perfect because uh, as you can see if there's plenty of power in the system it's not actually going to consume your fuels and then you have gridlock all over the place right so you can see that um, there's nothing being produced here because um, now it doesn't have to be producing anymore I don't think any of these materials are really needed here but um, let's say that you are limited on uh, hydrogen and you just have that stored up well um, that means that you're also not going to produce all your other materials so maybe graphene uh, or energized graphene or, or, or whatever else you're producing with the oil supply chain so anyway that's the uh, the thermal power station so it's fairly useful but I wouldn't rely on it in the long run okay the next one is the solar panels and I've kind of mixed feelings on the solar panels it's probably the only uh, sort of mid game power source that is going to be very good to use and in that case you you have to set up something like this ring around the equator that you can see it's been put together here um, the reason for it is that 
it actually needs the sun to operate and if you don't have the sun then um, you're not going to get any power uh, but I don't know the number of clicks that it takes to put something like this together is quite a lot so it's not particularly fun to put together but I also don't until you have unlocked the Dyson Sphere um, there's no other good mass energy production solution um, other than the solar panels so um, it may well be need to be a feature of your game uh, as well then the I guess the most thematic power source that you can rely on is the Dyson Sphere which is pretty good but you know it takes quite a bit of time to actually get to the point where this is useful you can depend on the Dyson Sphere with just the solar sails um, so without the shell but just the solar sails which is a little bit easier but these solar sails decay over time so um, you only ever get to a certain level where the rate of decay is the same as your rate of production so you can't infinitely scale when they are just um, sort of floating around the place they have to actually be in the shell formation for them to stay around uh, over time and then the other problem with the Dyson Sphere is that um, you need to have uh, these you need to have a line of sight with these I'm trying to find one um, with the x-ray collectors I think they're called uh, yeah so these ones you have to actually have line of sight with the Dyson Sphere for them to work and on this planet it doesn't really work uh, for example it, if um, this gas giant gets in the way then they're not gonna work anymore so they have a similar problem to the um, solar panel depending on what the planet is so it's not perfect to rely on them but the way to actually make it really reliable is to find one of the planets um, in your solar system that actually can have a continuous connection which is in this case um, this first planet and I won't fly there right now you can watch the previous video to see this in action but this has a whole bunch of them planted on it and then it uses these um, accumulators to exchange energy uh, with the planet and I'll show you how that works uh, if I can find them I think they're this way yeah they're over here so what you can do with these energy exchanges you can either charge empty accumulators or you can discharge full accumulators um, and if you discharge them they add to the grid if you charge them they take away from the grid but they'll only ever take away excess energy in the grid excess power in the in the grid and the good thing is that you get the accumulators back after you discharge them so you can kind of set up an infinite supply chain of these and you bring them to a planet that is quite close to Dyson Sphere to charge and then you can distribute them throughout your planetary systems um, to actually power your local planets um, so uh, they just go into one of these transport hubs and then they get transported around the uh, around the galaxy wherever you want them to go just like any other material um, so this is the best way that I found uh, to do the uh, to to power a particular planet ah over here so what you do with your so, so to produce these excited photons uh, the critical photons I should say is that you put them into that you use one of these ray receivers and then you turn it into the photon generation mode where it's going to produce these photons and that's also being done in this case on this other planet here and then they're being transported locally 
um, to these critical photons. And then the um, particle collider here produces the uh, antimatter. And then you use the antimatter to produce these fuel rods. So um, let me go and actually I'm going to need to put down a um, a assembler for this and I also need to actually go get some titanium alloys so I'll be back okay so I've just gone and retrieved some uh, titanium alloy and then I need to also grab a little bit a few of these and a little bit of antimatter and then I will select this here and stick some of that in. Where are those? Oh, I might have to produce some of them just a sec. So I'll make, uh, I don't know, four of them. Oh, it's going to take a bit of time. Okay, so I'll put the other bits, pieces. That need. So what does it need? Hydrogen, okay. Have some hydrogen there. And then I have some of that there. So let's see. Okay just about to produce that which is great and then I'll put this in and now it's going to produce these antimatter fuel rods and then you put these uh, put them into this uh, miniature or artificial star okay so let me take that uh, and then it will well it won't actually produce any power in this case because it's connected to the grid. So let me disconnect it from the grid. And then it'll actually produce some power, which is pretty cool. So this produces what? 75 megawatts of power. And um, I think it stays active for quite a bit of time. It depends on the power load, of course. But um, yeah, I didn't find this way of producing energy that good because it relies on sort of particle colliders and then you have to construct something and these annihilation constraint spheres actually take um, bits uh, various materials right I have to also put, you put titanium alloy into this and that's just um, like a lot of consumables that go into the power production chain and the other way with these um, energy exchange is actually a lot easier and it, you can kind of perpetuate it, right? Um, there's no uh, consumables or there's no reduction in any material associated with putting together uh, or powering a planet with these. So uh, I'd say that's the best long-term energy production approach that I would recommend. Um, but of course, until you unlock it and sort of make it work, then you have to use some of the other techniques where um, you know the wind turbine is a really good way to get started then these sort of panels as long as you put a belt around your planet are pretty good as well they're going to produce a lot of power for you and get you through the mid game um, these thermal power stations are reasonably good they produce a lot of power but you know it's again consumable materials have to be um, uh, stuck into them so anyway that's the uh, I guess the guide on power generation for the Dyson Sphere program. So thanks for watching and um, see you, talk to you next time.